Hey guys, welcome to another video on the ESP32 drone. Uh, this is my ESP32 flight controller. You can see an ESP32 here and an MP6050 IMU here. These two components are only required for this flight controller. The main objective uh, why this flight controller was made was that any uh, hobbyist who or any student who is on a budget and wants to make a drone can get started quickly and just learn about drones and make a flight control for themselves. Uh, and I chose ESP32 because it has a Wi-Fi unit which you can use to make your own transmitter on a phone instead of using this or also you can uh, make a mini drone for that and also you can use micro ROS uh, to integrate with ESP32. I have not yet done it for this drone but I don't see why that could not be done so leaving any options open I have uh, considered of making this drone. So if you want to know in depth about the flight controller uh, code and how it, how it works you can refer these guys. So first one is Juke Brooking and the second one is Carbon Aeronautics. These guys have made an extensive playlist on explaining about drones and what all things are there. I would heavily suggest this series for anyone who wants to learn in depth about drones. I've taken their code and their ideas and their concepts and put it on an ESP32. Obviously there were some issues with integration so I fixed that for ESP32 and the drone flies quite well. In the earlier iterations, this drone was not able to fly that well. Uh, so I made a few changes recently and that turned out the performance increase to a greater extent. Here's how the drone flew earlier. So how did I improve the performance of this drone? Well, I did these optimizations. So the first one was I increased the motor writing frequency. So um, earlier the code used to write the values to the motors at 50 hertz. I increased this writing frequency to 500 hertz. Uh, if you want to talk conceptually, this should be just 250 hertz because at 250 hertz, our um, void loop runs. Uh, but if you increase it, double it, uh, it, it's sort of more responsive and I like the result here so I kept it there. Uh, and if you increase it a lot more, it gives a jittery response. So I settled for these values and that sort of majorly uptake the stability of the drone. And the second thing I did was reduce the overall execution time using uh, coding techniques and use a, calm, a complement filter instead of a calm on filter. So you can see that the non-optimized code took this much microseconds and the optimized took just 300 microseconds, uh, 3000 microseconds. We have a limit of 4000 microseconds uh, because that's how we defined it in the code. Uh, that's a standard frequency for a drone. 
and you can see we saved a lot of microseconds by doing this uh, these three uh, code optimizations. I'm gonna briefly go through them. What are these? So here you can see this was the old code where we were calling the function. So when you call a function in a microcontroller, it jumps to that address and there's a memory fetch, address fetch and uh, memory decode, address fetch, sorry, there's an address fetch cycle that happens. And uh, that sort of increases your function call overhead. So it increases your time. So instead of that, you can just call the raw function here without any function. You, you can just write the function as it is and not call the function. So this saves your execution time. Also, you can do a constant substitution of the minimum and max values, which again saves time. Uh, one more thing I did was, this was the code for Kalman filter. The Kalman filter is quite a good approach. It's the best approach for any sort of robotic system. But I saw that with a simple complementary filter, the results were approximately the same. So I use a complementary filter instead, and you, this is very computationally inexpensive compared to the Kalman filter. So doing these changes, uh, we reduce the time from 3.4 milliseconds to, sorry, yeah, uh, so 3,400 uh, milliseconds to 300, uh, 3,000 milliseconds, uh, microseconds. Uh, yeah, so that was a good uptake in the performance. Uh, and other than that, I did a soft mounting for the IMU. You can see that there are two double-sided tapes, sort of like uh, pillars, and this gives a good shock absorption to the IMU to absorb any uh, absorb any vibrations. You can also experiment with the low-pass filter on the IMU itself and check whether you get a better result or not. So uh, this is as per the optimizations I've discussed. Uh, now if you want to build this, you can visit my GitHub repository. That is this one. And it has a readme file which explains a lot about it. I'm going to update it. Uh, I've updated it and you can go to it and check it and build your own drone. Now, before you build your own drone, I would like to tell you that this system here is a DIY system. Again, it's not a professional system. Anything can go wrong. It can still fall. It can poke in someone's eyes. These have a lot of destructive energy. So if you're making a medium sized drone like this, Please be very careful, keep it very away and do whatever testing you need to do. And once it gives a stable flight, then you can go a little closer. These are just some disclaimers of all the injuries that it can cause. So please be very careful while using drone. Okay, it, it can cause a lot of damage. Uh, if no, not flown properly, of course. So that's about it. Thank you guys. Have a great time ahead. Um, yeah, leave your suggestion in the comment section. Um, I was very thankful that one person gave me this suggestion and I implemented it and it, it, it turned out very well. So please leave your suggestions. I'm open to any suggestions and as usual, have a great day ahead.